So during last week's uh, Michael Cohen testimony, we learned that Donald Trump had instructed uh, Cohen to do some interesting things. Now, one of them is uh, hide his transcripts. Now, well, that's weird, right? Why would you hide your both your college transcripts and your high school transcripts? It, okay, look, I understand if that's private information, and it is. Uh, but then again, this is somebody who runs around bragging how smart he is. Now, how did he do that? Well, he did that by having Cohen send threatening letters to Trump's schools, warning that they will hold your institution liable if any of the records were released. Hmm, that's strange. Uh, now, in his letter to the president of Fordham University, for example, uh, where Trump spent his first two years of college studying business administration, Cohen demanded that the records be, quote, permanently sealed and said any re release would be criminality that could lead to jail time. Now, look, um, if you do release records, yes, they are uh, bound by privacy. So there is, he might be right that there would be some consequences to releasing those records. Now, Fordham followed up with that by saying that, yes, that was true. They actually did get threatened by Michael Cohen. Fascinating. So now we already knew that, right? And we found that out. But now we're learning more. Thanks to the superintendent of the military academy that President Trump went to when he was younger. Uh, now, that superintendent is named Jeffrey Coverdale. And he confirmed on Monday that members of the school's board of trustees wanted him to hand over President Trump's records and hand it over to them. Now, why would they do that? Well, so they could, I don't know, bury them or destroy them or... Who knows, right? All he knew is that there is a group of very powerful people now that wanted his records and wanted it in there. And they were all Trump friends uh, and allies and wanted those records to themselves. Hmm. Now, Evan Jones, the headmaster of the time, tells the Washington Post that Coverdale, quote, came to me in a panic because he had been accosted by prominent wealthy alumni of the school who were Mr. Trump's friends and wanted to keep his records secret. So, you know, this wasn't hordes of Washington Post reporters saying, give us the records, give us the records. It wasn't a shadowy cabal to go against Donald Trump. No, it was Donald Trump's friends saying, let's get together, let's get those records, and let's bury him. Hmm. Now, he said, quote, you need to go grab that record and deliver it to me because I need to deliver it to them. Them, as I said before, Donald Trump's friends and cronies that were on the board. Now, why were they on the board? Likely because either their dad put them, uh, his dad put them there, um, or, you know, something to do with Donald Trump having lots and lots of money and power over this school institution. Now, Coverdale says, quote, I was given directives, part of which I could follow, but part of which I could not. And that was handing them over to the trustees. He's like, look, I'll find the records, but I'm not so sure about giving them to other people. These are supposed to be sealed records. These are supposed to be private. I can't just give these records to you, which I think is fair. He said, I moved them elsewhere on the campus where they could not be released and added that it's the only time I've ever moved an alumnus's records. Why the scrutiny? Why, why are they so interested in hiding and burying these records? That's really weird. I don't think you'd do that unless you've got something to hide. Unless you're really, really worried about something. Maybe it's being caught up in a bunch of lies. Now, the, the reason I say that is, look, this happened actually back in 2011. This was before Donald Trump uh, had run for president in 2016. But... You guys got to remember that Donald Trump had been trying to run for president for a long, long time. That was on his bucket list. That was something that he really, really wanted to do. And in 2011, he was ramping up his home run against Barack Obama. And part of that was, of course, going after Barack Obama. In fact, he was going on TV, asking for his birth certificate, asking for his college records. According to the Post, he was considering challenging Obama in the 2012 election and had been making the rounds on TV, stepping up his criticism of the president, including insinuating that Obama was not qualified for admission to Columbia, where he finished his undergraduate degree, or Harvard, where he went to law school and graduated 
magna cum laude. Huh, I wonder why he was so skeptical of Obama. Weird. Now, we know, he's an old school racist. He couldn't believe a black man could have gotten to those positions on his own. And, of course, that also revealed his deep, deep insecurity. He's not only racist, but insecure. And, of course, he lies all the time. He kept saying on, his on the campaign trail that he is smarter and better than everyone else. Last year, he, he, he said that, quote, he heard that I was first in my class at the University of Pennsylvania's Wharton Business Program. That's what he said. He heard he was the best. He heard. If you were the best, wouldn't you know that? You should know that. But no, it's a lie. Trump's name does not actually appear in the school's dean list or on the list of students who received academic honors in this class of 1968. So, no, he was not one of the best. As far as military school, uh, Trump told the Post during the 2016 campaign that he, quote, did very well under the military system. I became one of the top guys at the whole school. Really? Well, we don't know that. And you're certainly trying to make it so that we can't find out by hiding your records. And why do I think that is? I think it's because he's dumb and he knows he's dumb. <laughs> so back to the efforts to try to bury that transcript. Now, Richard Pizzullo, who was a graduate who worked closely with school officials in a drive to save the school. Now, that school, that military school that he went to, got into a little bit of financial distress. So they were having some problems, and that actually factors in. Uh, now, Pizzullo said, I know for a fact that in 2011, the decision was made by the superintendent to remove those records and secure them so that no one on the staff could get to them. And by securing, he meant either moving them or giving them to Trump's allies. So again, they could, this is my assumption, destroy those records. Jones recalled telling his boss, quote, I don't know if we should be doing this. He told me that several wealthy alumni, including a close friend of Mr. Trump, were putting a lot of pressure on the administration to put the record in their custody for safekeeping. Mm. And, of course, this was, again, while uh, they were having some financial problems. So, you know, I don't know what promises might have been made. Hey, give us the records and we might give you a little funding. I don't know. But it just makes you think about this. And while it didn't go to those guys, it did get buried. Coverdale knows where it is, but declined to say where he hid Trump's records or to identify the people who ordered him to pull them out of the school's files. He said, quote, I don't want to get into anything with these guys. You have to understand, these were millionaires and multimillionaires on the board, and the school was going through some troubles. But to hear you will deliver them to us, that doesn't happen. This was highly unusual. You saw that? I don't want to get into these guys. They're rich and powerful. They will bury me. That's the subtext there. <laughs> and of course, that's intimidation. That's why as long as those people are around, we'll never know where those records are. They are effectively buried. They are out of play. And then, of course, saying that I can't get on the bad side of those wealthy people. Wealth and power, man. Intimidation. And again, this has never happened before. No student has ever had rich people come to take and bury their records. In fact, he said, uh, going back to uh, Coverdale, it was the only time in my education career that I ever heard of someone's record being removed. But people were fearful as a result of whatever call was made for Mr. Trump's friends. I was told we're getting a lot of heat about this. There's something in there. There's something in there. You know it. There's something that they want. Whether it be like complete failing grades or there's something. There's something in those records. Now I'm interested. I'm super interested. And it might just be boring. Like, I don't care. Like, okay, I got bad grades in high school. So what? I actually got pretty good uh, grades in college. 
it's all about application and it's all about, of course, your environment. Now, Donald Trump had a fantastic environment growing up and he was extremely wealthy. But like now, I'm assuming that he was incredibly lazy when he was younger and probably didn't want to work. Same thing as now. And so he probably slacked off and didn't do his schoolwork and got bad grades. I don't know. Then again, you go back to some of the stories where he had college professors who literally called him the dumbest pe uh, person in class. So I don't know, but I am interested in seeing those records now. Um, now, as far as uh, some of the leverage that they might have had is the school, right? Now, the school's willingness, according to the Post, to move the records stemmed from Trump's special status and the school's precarious position at the time, according to several academy graduates and former staff members. It was in debt, it needed money, and it was being threatened by Trump's rich allies. And it put it in danger of being shut down. And at first, what's interesting is that that school was actually asking uh, former graduates for help. They were trying to do a fundraiser. And so naturally they reached out first for president to, pre uh, not, he wasn't president at the time, but to Donald Trump, who said, quote, what do I get for my $7 million? And that's all they were asking him for. Now Donald Trump's supposed to be a billionaire. And he can't spare $7 million for a school that he went to. Mm, don't you think that's interesting? Now, the military academy was prepared to offer to name a summer program, a building, or potentially even the school itself after Donald Trump, according to academy officials. But Trump said that no investment in the school was worthwhile to him. He said, quote, the school had had a good run. No, nah, man, it's none of those. He just didn't have the money. He's not rich. He's not rich. He's pretending to be rich. And I can almost guarantee that if they get into his financials, it will show that he's not rich. And of course, after the meeting with Trump, the group from the Academy finally met with Michael Cohen, who delivered the same message, except that he said this, quote, uh, this is according to Paluzzo, Cohen told us that he would love to have the money to buy the school so he could bulldoze it. Now tell me, are these the actions of someone who is proud of their academic career? That feels a sense of, I don't know, belonging or a sense of loyalty to where they graduated from? No, it is not. <laughs> I mean, look, again, I could understand if the entire need for this is privacy, right? But if you're interested in privacy, then you don't go out there proclaiming that you're the best and you're the greatest and then hide the very things that would prove that. No, it's all deep insecurity because he knows the truth and we know the truth. He only got through a high school and only got through college because of daddy. He's not, so sm he's not a smart person. He's not a very stable genius. He is incredibly dumb and he knows it. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYTNation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.